Sergeant Goss of the Toxton Police Force is accused of malicious prosecution. He's the defendant in a civil action being brought by Benjamin Easter, the leader of a gang of youths called the Thunderbolts. He alleges that Goss beat him up on an evening in March and subsequently brought a prosecution against him for assaulting a police officer. Easter was acquitted of this charge and then brought this action for malicious prosecution, which is being heard in Fulchester because of the strong local feelings the case has aroused in Toxton. In the witness box is John Tucker, another member of the Thunderbolts gang. Mr. Tucker, are you a member of a group of motorcycle enthusiasts called the Thunderbolts? I am, Your Honor. Of which Benny Easter is the leader? That's correct, Your Honor. You don't have to call me, Your Honor. I'm sorry. There's no need to be unflattered. Now, Mr. Tucker, are the Thunderbolts a law-abiding group? Oh, yes. Brought together purely by the common interest, that is to say, motorcycles? Yes. But don't you like to get together to do a bit of hell-raising? No, ma'am. Do you like to have burn-ups in the back lane? Not at all, ma'am. Well, isn't that half the fun? No, ma'am, wouldn't be no fun at all. In what way? Why, well, it would be... Why is that? No fun having a burn-up around the back streets in Grattan. It would be too narrow, it would be dangerous. I mean, couldn't do no speed. Now, what do you mean by speed? Well, it would be dangerous to over 25 miles an hour, and they wrote. Now, if this is not what the group do, what do they do? Ah, scrambling, dirt track racing, going to meetings, keeping the bikes in good shape, you know. Do you think the police take a special interest in the group? Well, they do that, show a good deal of interest. Is this interest warranted? Ah, no, no, we already never do nothing. Do you think the police are unfair to you? Yes, yeah, certainly, ma'am. Can you think of any particular interest? Yes, yeah, certainly. There's a... You have finished. Oh, yes. Please carry on. I'll tell you about a time. Me, Benny, Grass and Trev was going to a meeting over at Street. We had a trailer with a bike hitched up to the bread van. Uh, Trevor has the bread van Saturdays, and with the trailer hitched up to it... What sort of a meeting were you going to, Mr. Tucker? We was going to a scrambling meeting, Your Honour, my lord. And we had the trailer hitched up fine, everything fine, and we had 20 minutes to be there at 2 o'clock. And we were just 50 yards up the glade, went down, round the bend, down the hill comes the police car, and stops right in front of us in the middle of the road. Now he gets, this is what he does. He doesn't say nothing to his bloke driving, but he makes us back away and pull in at the side of the road. And then here it all goes, it starts, does it start? You think we was drug smuggling? First off, it's the insurance. Well, he's seen the insurance himself only a month or so back. Were you there on that occasion? Yeah, but this... Your Honour, sorry. Yeah, but this time he wants to see if it's fixed up for towing a trailer. He says, of course it was, clear as daylight. Had a bracket on the back for towing a trailer. Wasn't like he wouldn't be insured for it. Anyhow, he's satisfied himself with that and he's taken his time. Mind you, he knew what time we had to be there. He knew where we was to. He knew the meeting started at half past two. But he was all for just keeping us there while he checked the trailer over. He had us take the trailer off the van, undo the coupling like. He had us take the bikes off it. There was four bikes on it. And then he had a look at the springs underneath you. You think he was buying her office. <laughs> How long did he detain you? Ah, uh, let me see. Uh, we were leaving just after two. By the time he finished with us, we didn't get off until after half past two. Then he followed us all the way there to make sure we didn't hurry up too much. And did being late spoil your afternoon? It did. Wrecked it. I missed my first two races. So did Benny and Trevon Grass. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. How frustrating for you, Mr. Tucker. How frustrating. You say you were not finished with Sergeant Goss until 2.30. Right. And how long would it take you to get into street? Uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, so you'd expect to arrive there at around 10 minutes to 3. Right. But Mr Tucker, the local newspaper has this meeting advertised at 3 o'clock, this meeting in question. Did it? Ah, uh, yeah, but we are competitors. We had to be there half an hour early. I see. <laughs> you can hardly expect Sergeant Goss to have known that. We told him. And is it not true that with four motorcycles on this trailer attached to a bread van, that he was well within the scope of his duty in checking it. He checked it all right. And was right to do so. No, it was ridiculous. Mr. Tucker, did you ever take part in meetings outside Sergeant Goss's home and sing foul songs and shout at his wife? No. And were you amongst the gang that used to thunder past his house in the small hours of the morning on motorcycles? No. Have you ever heard about these events? No. Now, do you consider that you were persecuted by the police? I wasn't. Benny was. You weren't. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. I call Mrs. Amanda Grant. And did you see the incident between Sergeant Goss and Benjamin Easter on March the 23rd this year? That's right. Would you describe what you saw, Mrs. Grant, please? Certainly. I came out of my gate and I saw the police car and I thought, oh, trouble. There's been so much of it, you see. And I thought of Benny Easter knocking about with the Goss daughter, and we knew Goss didn't like it. So I seen the car, and I seen him, and I knew something was up. I guess there was. Well, 
The car stops in the middle of the road, the way they do, and Gus gets out. And he goes across the road and starts up talking to the two lads by the pavement. That's Easter and Tucker. Benjamin Easter and John Tucker, Your Honour. Yeah. Well, Tommy didn't take no notice. Uh, I'm he, sorry, Mrs. Grant, he, Tommy. Which one is Tommy? Oh, I beg your pardon, Your Honour. John. Yes. John Tucker. I see. Well, he didn't look up. And the way he was behaving, I was surprised it was Benny Easter Sergeant Goss takes an interest in. I'd, I'd have been far more to do with John. Anyway, that's how it was. Then, as you know by now, Sergeant Goss takes Benny by the arm and he pushes him up the road a bit and follows him. Now, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I knew he was talking to him and he follows him up the road away from where John is tinkering with his bike. Now, I am going to say this. Them boys have been told not to tinker with their bikes by the side of the road in that way. They do leave an awful mess sometimes, uh, but that's not what I'm here to say. But it did surprise me that that wasn't what Mr. Goss was on to. Anyway, he seems only to be interested in Benny. And he's talking away to him, and he's getting in very close uh, to Mrs. him. Mrs. Grant, you must make it clear who is talking to whom. Uh, uh, Sergeant Goss is to Benny, Your Honour, my lord. <clears throat> I see. Go on. And he's getting very close to him, right in, close. And then I see him shoving against him and pushing him, and I could see he was out for trouble. But all the while, I could see that Benny wasn't meeting his eye, and I thought, good lad, good lad, don't you give in to it. And all the time, Goss is pushing him towards the gate of number 17. That's on the right-hand side, those houses with the steps down to the paths, you know. And he's pushing Benny, just walking on to him, like, and, and toor uh, towards his steps. And then Benny taps him. He just taps him to try and get round him to stop him falling down the steps, and then it starts. Then Goss goes into him. Oh, he was merciless. I thought there was going to be a battle royal. I was surprised Benny could restrain himself. He hardly did a thing to defend himself. He was doubled up, trying to get away from the blows. And then Goss drags him off across the road and throws him in the car, and they drove off. Now, when you first saw the car, you thought there'd be trouble. That's right. Have you ever seen the police cars down the glade before? Oh, have I? Well, it's like having your own private police force, only they was against us. They were against you? No, but they did seem to be against them boys. They was down there regular. Thank you, Mrs Grant. Mrs Grant, where were you uh, going? <clears throat> what were you doing when you came out of your gate and you saw this car? I was going up to the post office. You were going up to the village? That's correct. Now, you lived, do you not, Mrs Grant, at number 27, the Glade? That's right. But, Mrs Grant, the fight took place outside number 17. Well? Well, Mrs Grant, if you were going up to the village from number 27, you wouldn't go past number 17. No, you wouldn't. So how did you come to see the fight? Uh, my Lord, I wonder if my learned friend could find some other word than fight to describe the incident, which I suggest, which I submit, is deliberately misleading. In what way is it misleading, Miss Tate? Well, it takes two people to cause a fight, my Lord, and as Benny Easter has been acquitted of the charge of assault, he did not take part in a fight. Uh, what word would my learned friend prefer? I think incident would be a more accurate and less misleading a word to use, my lord. Well, let's not waste time over this. Incident will do. Continue. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my lord. And so, Mrs. Grant, how was it that you saw the incident? Well, I walked towards it when I saw the police car. You anticipated a bit of fun. Well... What attracted you? Nothing. Well, something must have done. A bit of gossip. I wanted to know what would happen, what was up. Why did you? Was it any of your business? Now, I know what you're saying. But you've got to realise we're very close down there. We're one big family. Yes, I'm sure you all are. And so it was curiosity that took you out of your way. You could call it that. The hope that one of the family would send the copper off with a flea in his ear? No, not that. Oh, that come on now, Mrs all. Grant. You've got no great love for the police, have I you? I think they're fine, but not when they persecute them boys. Now, you said that at one point, before Sergeant Goss hit Easter at all, you say that Easter tapped Sergeant Goss. Yes. Well, I suggest to you that, that what you call a tap was, in fact, a blow that Easter hit Sergeant Goss. No. Well, can you really be sure? Yes. Between a tap and a blow? I can tell the difference. Well, someone else has described it as a push, Mr Easter himself. Now, was it a tap? Or was it a blow? Or was it a push? Well, it was like a tap to push him out of the way. He was falling down the steps. And did Sergeant Goss recoil when he was hit? Did he step back? Well, 
Not much. But a bit? Uh, I suppose so. Now, perhaps you could tell us how many times Easter was hit by Sergeant Goss. Well, I couldn't say, but several times. Oh, Mrs Grant, you appear to have seen this incident in such close detail. Can't you be more precise than that? Several times. Are you sure it wasn't just once? A heavy enough blow, but once? No, it was more than once. And when Sergeant Goss took Easter across the waiting police car after the incident, you say he threw him into the car. Now, what did you mean by that? He had him by the hair and he pushed him into the car. He sort of pushed and let go. And did Easter fall into the car? Yes, he did. He sort of scrambled. And did he appear to hit his face as he fell? Did he hurt himself? I couldn't see. Thank you, Miss Brown. I call James Goodwill, my lord. I was standing at the back of my van and I was thinking at him. Don't do it, Benny, son. Don't hit him. And he didn't. When you say he never touched him, Mr Goodwill, to whom are you referring? Neither of them, Your Honour. You mean both of them? Both of them. Oh, they were standing there. They were tense, like they was ready to fight. They were like a couple of curs. They were growling, not looking at each other. And then Benny just pushes around Sergeant Goss, and Goss started into him. He hit him in the stomach, and then gets hold of him by the air, as far as I can see. Pushes the palm of his hand into... Benny's face, rubs his nose like, which can be very painful. Now, from where did you see this, Mr Goodwill? A few yards up from number six. Now, when you say a few yards up from number six, what precisely do you mean, Mr Goodwill? Down from it, to be exact, Your Honour. <clears throat> Down towards the fields. But it was only a couple of yards. And did you see any more? Oh, yes. Then they started coming towards me. The policeman had Benny Easter by the hair. He had long hair then. Oh, my, he had long hair. And the policeman was pulling him across the road by his air towards the car. Then the car door opens. Chap inside opens it, and he pushes Ben Easter in. Now, did you see inside the car? No, not much. I didn't like to bend down to look. Did you see whether Easter hit his face in the back, in the back of the car? I did not see, no. Mr Goodwill, did you at any time think that Benny Easter had done anything or made any movement that could be mistaken for an attack on Sergeant Goss? To me, no. What about when Easter pushed Goss? He was pushing round him, just to stop going into Mrs. Argybetter's garden. Down the steps, I suppose. Now, that's the garden of um, number 17. That is correct, my <coughs> lord. Yes. Was it clear that Easter was merely pushing past him? To me, yes. Now, Mr. Goodwill, do you think that the police are unfair to these boys? I do. The motorcycles that these boys ride, do they cause a lot of annoyance? No, not really. Do they, does the noise annoy you? No. Do they, in your opinion, cause an undue amount of noise? Ah, oh, well, that depends what you mean by undue. I mean, tractors noisy, they cause noise. And then they gravel pits. I mean, they really do cause noise. Even cows. You can't stop they, can you? I mean, a cow outside our back window had her calf took away. Kept me awake half the night. I wouldn't have minded the police coming down then. Maybe you should have telephoned Sergeant Goss. I would have if I'd have found. And so the noise of the bites causes you no more annoyance than normal everyday sounds. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Goodwill. Mr. Goodwill, you say that <coughs> the noise of the motorcycles doesn't bother you. Did I? You've just said that. Oh, yeah, well, well, not a great amount, no. But do they go past your house? Well, they're in the road outside. Yes, but do they go thundering past your house? No. Because the glade is a cul-de-sac, isn't it? That is correct. So they couldn't thunder past your house? Well, not without ending up in the fields. So it's hardly surprising that you're not bothered by the noise. That is the case for the plaintiff, my lord. 